here are the hints to solve problems six, uh, 761 to 764. Let's start with problem 761. In this case, we have an example of a leak of test for which we have both uh, the surface pressure reading and the downhole pressure reading. The first part, uh, it involves calculating what is the total vertical stress. And in this case, you know what is the water depth over here. You know what is the true vertical uh, depth at the shoe depth. And therefore, if you use typical values of the gradient for uh, water pressure and also for the lithostatic gradient, you should be able to calculate what is the total vertical stress. That should be more or less a, an easy point. So somewhere over here, and uh, just to summarize this, this is going to be at A50 uh, feet. Don't forget to add and to include the, the effect of the water weight, all right? In number B, uh, we're going to use the data of the, the leak of test, and uh, you're gonna calculate uh, with the value of fracture closure pressure and using the downhole reading, you're going to uh, calculate what is the minimum effective stress. So remember that the fracture closure pressure in absolute units, in downhole units, is going to give you what is the least principal stress, least total principal stress. If you know what the pore pressure is, you should be able to calculate what is the effective, the least effective principal stress. Also, if you know pore pressure and you know the total vertical stress, you should be able to calculate the effective vertical stress. And after you calculate that fracture pressure value and you compare it to, to SV, you're gonna be able to realize if this is under normal faulting, strike slip, or reverse faulting by comparing these two values, S3 and SV. And after you do that, uh, you're also going to be able to compute what is this ratio sigma V over sigma H mean, and that's going to be another hint to tell you what the uh, faulting stress regime is. And this is question C. What is the stress uh, regime? And you're going to be able to do that just by uh, reading this uh, leak of test and getting out of it what is the fracture closure pressure and what is the total, uh, the least uh, total uh, principal stress. And there is one more thing that I want you to do for this problem, and that is to calculate what is the density of the mud. Notice that here we have readings of surface pressure and downhole pressure. So when the surface pressure is equal to zero, that means that at that condition, your downhole pressure reading is going to just be equal to the hydrostatic column of fluid on top of it whenever this one is equal to zero. Uh, so if you know the downhole pressure reading from this uh, axis and you know all the other variables, you should be able to tell what is the density of the mud. Sometimes these, these uh, downhole pressure and surface pressure readings are a little bit different because there is friction through the, the casing and uh, to the tubing as uh, the drilling mud goes down and uh, goes to the, to the bottom of the, of the wellbore into downhole conditions. And that's why those uh, might be uh, different. They are not exactly the same. That's why uh, I put this uh, approximate value over here since we're ignoring those uh, effects. All right, 
let's talk about now problem uh, 762. Problem 762, it's a problem that involves a microfrac data and uh, and it's going to be very similar to the one that we have seen in lectures. If you click in in this file, you're going to be taken to my GitHub repository for the class. And here you will be able to download this file that has three columns, time, pressure, and injection rate. So for example, here, time is 70.29 minutes, pressure is 1332.85, uh, and the rate is uh, zero gallons per minute. So you're gonna have to uh, copy all of this data. And uh, let me, for example, here go into raw, you can either download this file or do what I'm doing. Now with the with copying, I mean, if you just paste that, you're gonna be able to, to paste the, the data. If you select it and you either use the import feature or text to columns here in data, and here we're gonna use the limited, we're gonna use a space and finish. You see here you have your three columns. Uh, the first one is, as we were saying before, is uh, time. The second one is pressure. And the third one is uh, rate. And once you uh, use this data, uh, you're going to be able to uh, plot something similar to what we have over here. Let me go through that. Uh, defeat test. All right. Right here. OK, so it's going to be very similar to to this problem in which uh, you can plot surface pressure. You also have surface pressure in that problem and rate as a function of time. After you find what is the instantaneous shedding pressure, you can use this data and plot that data as a function of the time after the shedding pressure. And all of that, that difference, uh, you take the square root and you replot that and you're gonna be able to find the point at which you have the fracture closure pressure. And that's going to be at the point in which this trend deviates into from a linear trend to something which is not linear and decays more slowly. So in this problem, then uh, say 762, uh, you just download the file, you make plots similar to the ones that uh, I showed over here and you will be able to determine the fracture closure pressure, which uh, together with the depth are gonna help you determine uh, what is the total principal stress at this place. Similar to what we said for problem 761, remember that here also fracture closure pressure is going to tell you what is the value of the least principal total stress. Knowing pore pressure and knowing depth is gonna help you uh, calculate uh, what is uh, that uh, value. Something very important that you also have to take into account here is the definition of surface pressure and downhole pressure. Remember that, that those are not the same and in order to obtain that whole pressure, you need to add the uh, density of the, of the fluid, which in this case, it has a gradient of 0.44 PSI per foot. What that might be, it looks like 
it's uh, water, right? So this is a fluid in this case inside the well bore. All right, let's go to problem uh, 763. Uh, problem 763, it's uh, related to a, a DFID test. And in this DFID test, what I like that you do is that you can use the plot or you can read the plot and understand uh, what's going on in here. And in this example, uh, we have uh, this data set that we don't have numerical data, but we have the graphical data. And for that, you're going to have to tell me what is the injected volume during this entire DFID test. If you have flow rate barrels per minute and you have time here on the x-axis, you should be able to tell me what is that volume. For number B, uh, I like that you indicate what are the values of fracture propagation pressure, instantaneous shedding pressure, and fracture closure pressure from this plot uh, to the best of your abilities. I, I don't want a lot of precision in here. I just want you to know in which order they are. So if you review the lectures, you're going to see that these have in a specific order. So first you start pressurizing the wellboard, and then things go on in here, and these are going to have an order that uh, corresponds to the process of fracturing. And uh, for example, in this case, I'm going to give you a hint. So this is the shutting, right? So the shutting for the shutting pressure, it might be somewhere over here. Again, I don't want you to tell me exactly what that value is, but to tell me more or less what the likely value would be. For example, the surface shutting pressure is not going to be 500 PSI, right? It's going to be somewhere over here. The fracture closure pressure uh, is not going to be uh, over here on the top, the breakdown pressure. No, it's going to be uh, sometime after the fracture closure pressure. So from this uh, exercise, I want you to be able to read these plots and to uh, determine from that plot uh, the likely values of these very important characteristic pressures. And uh, for number C, uh, I like that you make schematics of what is the flow behavior in the uh, before and after shutting. And uh, here I specifically, uh, specifically mean uh, what happens with the fluid if it's leaking off from the well bore or it's leaking off from the well bore and also the fracture. This is very important to know because this is what determines what is the, the decay of the pressure uh, with time. And last, using the value of fracture closure pressure in surface units and knowing uh, what is the bottom hole pressure or down hole pressure, in this case, I like that you tell me what is the minimum principal stress in absolute numbers. In this plot, notice that, um, let's see, um, if we know what is the bottom hole pressure, and these are surface pressures, by knowing what is the surface pressure, and if you add that to the bottom hole pressure, which is the pressure just uh, uh, due to the to the weight of the fluid, you're going to be able to determine what this minimum principal stress is in absolute values, which is not the same as the surface pressure. And last, I like that you work in an example of a step rate test. In this step rate test, here you have the data, 
uh, here you have uh, seven steps. That's usually what uh, the step rate uh, targets. You preview more or less what the maximum rate is going to be, and you divide that evenly in steps. So we have seven steps. We have uh, seven rates according uh, to that. Uh, here, uh, this is a, a how uh, evenly these uh, rates uh, are divided. And here for each step, you have as a function of time, uh, what is uh, pressure increase. And something that I like that you do is that for this step rate test, uh, as you can see in the data, every time, every step, it starts at zero. Uh, well, I like that, for example, for the first step, uh, you plot that pressure, and this is going to look something like this, with several uh, points. And for the second step, uh, I like that you continue plotting that in right after that. So for example, this is going to be the T0 for step number one, right? But here you may continue that and use that T0 for step number two. And if you continue that, then later you're going to be able to uh, plot these seven cycles and obtain the plot later of rate as a function of, of pressure as a function of rate. And in order to do that, what you're going to have to do for that case is utilize the pressure at which pressure equili equilibrates, it gets to a steady state, and that's going to be more or less the last value out of this series. So when you plot now here pressure and here injection rate, oh, that was correct, injection rate, you're going to be able to obtain with those values something like this. And where those two trends intersect, this is going to what is going to give you the the parting rate and the parting pressure. All right. So um, this is uh, the end for the explanation of the problems from uh, seven six one to seven uh, six four.